Hey, in this example, I want to look at this gasoline tank flow rate problem. So in this problem, we have this 1000 liter tank. So this is an empty tank that can hold 1000 liters of this gasoline that's coming into it. And at the top here, we have this eight centimeter diameter pipe. So this is a circular pipe. I just labeled it pipe one. And this is where the gasoline is flowing into the tank from. And then here at the bottom, we have pipe two, which is 16 centimeters in diameter. So both are circular pipes and pipe one is much smaller than pipe two. So in pipe one, this is where the gasoline is entering. And in pipe two, this is where it is exiting. Now there's a couple givens in the problem. The first is that the tank itself can fill in two minutes. So let's say we put a stopper here at pipe two and we just turned on the gasoline. So it started filling up the tank from the bottom up. It would take exactly two minutes for this tank to be fully filled. So the question is asking us, well, there's two questions really. Uh, question A is what is the speed of the incoming flow? So what is the velocity of the fluid that's entering this pipe? And then the second question is what is the speed of the exiting flow? So in other words, what is the velocity of the fluid that's leaving the pipe? So what is the velocity of this gasoline entering the pipe? and exiting the pipe. Now I've placed here two conversions that we might need. The first one is one liter is equal to 0.001 meters cubed. So this is a volume conversion. And then the second conversion is a length conversion. So in one centimeter, there are 0.01 meters. Another way of saying that is in one meter, there are 100 centimeters. So these two conversions are conversions that we will need in this problem. So let's go ahead and start figuring out what is the speed of the incoming flow. So if we know that the flow is coming in through this eight centimeter pipe, and it takes two minutes for this volume to completely fill up, then we know that the flow rate, remember flow rate is velocity times area and the units of this flow rate are in meters cubed per second. So meters cubed is a volume and then second is just a unit of time. So if we know that the tank fills in two minutes, then I can say the flow rate of this entire system is 1000 liters per two minutes, which is 120 seconds. And if I do the math there, then I know the flow rate is 8.3333 liters per second. Another way of thinking about this is that in one second, the tank is going to fill up 8.3333 liters. And over the course of two minutes, which is this 120 seconds, it's gonna fill up the full 1000 liters. So because this tank takes two minutes to completely fill, I know that the flow rate is going to be 8.3333 liters per second. Now, you'll notice that I wrote these units of meters cubed per second here for the flow rate, because that's the consistent unit. So what I wanna do next is I wanna convert this flow rate into meters cubed per second. So if I said that the flow rate was 8.3333, liters per second. Well, this conversion right here tells us that in one liter, there are 0 0.001 meters cubed. So I'm gonna write that conversion factor right here. In one liter, there are 0 0.001 meters cubed. And if we do the math here, we get a value of 8.33 times 10 to the minus third meters cubed per second. So this is the volume flow rate that's coming into the system from pipe one. And now we can use this information to figure out what the speed of the incoming flow is. So if we look back here, we know that the volume flow rate is equal to velocity times area. So there's a couple things we need to do first. First, we need to figure out the area in which this gasoline is passing through. So we're given this diameter of the pipe, which is eight centimeters. And we can use that to figure out what the area is given that the pipe is circular. So I'm gonna write area of pipe one is going to be pi times r squared. Well, what is r? So this is pi times radius squared and the radius is going to be half of the diameter. So this is eight centimeters. So the radius is gonna be four centimeters. Now, if I convert four centimeters into meters using this conversion factor right here, then I get 0 0.04 meters 
as the radius squared. And if I plug this into my calculator, my calculator says it is pi over 625 meters squared. So this is just a nice way of writing whatever this is going to end up being. Okay, cool. So now that we have area one, which is the area of this first pipe, we also have the flow rate of the system, which is 8.3 times 10 to the minus third meters cubed per second. We can figure out what the speed of the incoming flow is based off of this equation. So I'm gonna do that here. I'm gonna say that Q is equal to velocity at pipe one times area of pipe one. Now we know what Q is. Q is 8.33 times 10 to the minus cubed meters or meters cubed per second. So 8.33 times 10 to the minus third meters cubed per second. And that is equal to this unknown velocity one, which is our, what we're trying to find. And then A1 is what we figured out right up here. So that is pi over 625 meters squared. And if we divide both sides uh, by this area, then we get velocity at point one is going to be equal to about 1.6, uh, I think it's 57 nine meters per second. Okay, cool. So we figured out this first part of the question, the speed of the incoming flow. So I'll go ahead and just write that here. So for pipe one, the velocity of one is going to be about 1.6579 uh, meters per second. Awesome. So the second part of the question asks, what is the speed of the exiting flow? Now, the only difference between the entering flow and the exiting flow is the diameter of the pipe. So pipe one was eight centimeters, pipe two is 16 centimeters. So the cross-sectional area of this pipe is gonna be a lot bigger than pipe one. So we know that the velocity is gonna be a little bit slower. Now, why is that? Well, if we drew streamlines through this example, so I'm gonna draw a few streamlines here just to kind of illustrate what's going on. You can see that the streamlines at the end are much further spaced apart than the ones that are entering the system. So the velocity is gonna be higher here because the streamlines are closer to one another. And because we increase the area, the streamlines can spread apart a little bit. So the volume or the velocity is going to be a little bit slower. Okay, cool. So just like we did with pipe one, I think a good place to start would be the area of pipe two. So the area of pipe two, which I guess I can just do here, is going to be pi times r squared. So what is r squared? So this is pi and the radius is 16 centimeters. Uh, or the diameter is 16 centimeters, so the radius is gonna be the diameter divided by two. This is going to be squared. Now this turns out to be pi. Uh, 16 divided by two is eight centimeters uh, squared. And because we want this in meters, eight centimeters in converting to meters is 0 0.08 meters. So we can square that and what we get is about 0 0.020106 uh, meters squared. So that is the cross-sectional area of pipe two. Now we can use this area to figure out what the velocity of the exiting flow is. We know that this entire volume flow rate is going to be equal all throughout the system. So what comes in must go out. So the volume flow rate going into pipe one must equal the volume flow rate coming out. And the volume flow rate we calculated up here to be 8.33 times 10 to the minus third meters cubed per second. So I can say down here that Q2, which is the exiting pipe, is equal to V2 times A2. And that is equal to 8.33 three times 10 to the minus third meters cubed per second, just like it was for pipe one. And the only difference here is that V2 is unknown, but the area we figured out to be 0 0.020106 meters squared. And that is equal to this 8.33 times 10 to the minus third meters cubed per second. So if we just do the math, divide both sides by the area, then we get volume or the velocity at pipe two is about 0 0.4145 meters per second. So there we go. The velocity 
exiting the system is 0.4 meters per second and the velocity entering the system is 1.6 meters per second. And so you can see that the velocity where their area is smaller is larger. The velocity is bigger than at the place where the area is larger. So again, the pipe here is much larger than pipe one, so we know that the velocity here is gonna be much greater than pipe two.